Hello, hello everybody. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to this crazy, scary world of plastics. Have you noticed plastics are everywhere? They are not just in our homes, all the stuff that we bought, but also they are litter on the roadside. And, uh, you know, they're going down the river and they're contaminating the ocean. And, uh, you know, there's so much contamination and microplastics. We read about that in the newspaper. There's plastics in the drinking water and in the food. So it is really crazy. And, you know, there's some students of ours, our lab here in the, in the audience, and they can actually measure, get this, plastic items, plastic particulates and constituents in every single one of us here. We are all contaminated with plastics. So it's crazy. We have a plastic addiction. And you know what? I really don't know how we're going to beat it. I, I don't know how we're going to beat this addiction. Ugh, Charlie! Forever. Hey, good to see you. How's it going? Yeah, good. Well, what the heck did you bring in here? Look at that. It's water. That's not water. That's a lot of plastics. I think you're suffering from that plastic addiction as well. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> so what? You know, define addiction. It's a negative behavior that's harmful to you and your family and friends and surrounding environment, but I'm kind of sure we're here to talk about plastic. It's so just don't do it, right? Bad behavior. Yeah, the talk is about plastics, but we have to talk about addiction because what we're looking at is an obsolete material. You know, it, you know what it reminds me of? The Model T. Oh, God, the Model T. Charlie. <laughs> you know, some of, you know, some of you are a little older. They remember the Model T, right? What was the Model T again? It was a car. It was a car. And it was famous, famous for three things, right? You could buy it in any color as long as it was black. That's right. It ran off the assembly line, and it was self-propelled. It was automotive. These were all great innovations at the time. But, you know, when humanity carves up a new technology, do we always get it right? Charlie, when you write a paper, is everything perfect? I screw up a lot, No, man. Yeah, we screw up a lot. I screw up a lot. You probably too. So what happened when they made the Model T? You know, it moved. It was cool. But, you know, they didn't think of safety. Actually, they didn't even think of what happens to the people in the car. And so when the Model T ran into, like, a lamppost, you know, it, it didn't have, a, have a, a crumble zone. And so the car was okay, but the driver and the passenger would be dead. Right? <laughs> so, you know, that's probably the reason why nobody's driving a Model T anymore. Is that right? Any Model T <coughs> drivers? No, okay, we don't have any. Okay, so because we have done a lot of innovation when it comes to cars, right? Oh, Charlie, yeah, screw all that stuff. I mean, we have cars now that are literally powered by the sun. You can throw solar panels on your house, you wow. know, charge your car there, take it out for a drive. There's really good emissions. It looks sleek. It looks sexy. It's completely different. <laughs> I like it. A lot of innovation, right? Yeah. But uh, let's go back to the plastics, because when we started making plastics, boy, we really screwed up. We made just about every mistake that's possible. Now, when you want to make plastics, you need building blocks, like Lego blocks, okay? What did we start out with? Charlie, what do you think? Nothing good. The, exactly. We started out with carcinogens. What are carcinogens? They cause cancer. These are cancer-causing chemicals. What an idea, right, to make a mass-produced material out of a cancer-causing material. Okay, so the chemists went ahead and they lined them up and uh, all the cancer-causing chemicals and then connected them and they arrived at a material, a polymer. It was a little rigid. And they said, oh, it's really not plastic, it's not pliable, it's not flexible. What do we do? And so they had a great idea. Let's soak it in an endocrine-disrupting chemical, a hormone mimic that gives men breath and women breast cancer. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's, th that's what happened. Now, Charlie, tell me what we, what we have improved with plastics. Nothing. B what? Yeah, it's the same are stuff. Are you nuts? Same you chemicals, same All these toxic people are stuff. sitting on plastic seats and have plastic cups in their hand, and nothing has changed in 70 years? No, it's the same toxic compounds. Same that stuff. is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. We improve everything, but we don't improve the material that we use the most. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder, what's the enabler of that? Why, how is that? Oh, oh, I think oh, I know. How many it. of you guys recycle? Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. good. Let's give a you know, warm applause for recycling. Yeah. Because, yeah, because uh, recycling is awesome. And who is the mastermind of recycling? Does anyone know? Shout it. If you, if you 
El Gore, uh, pretty good. But, you know, actually, it's, it's nature. Nature. <laughs> Chill, all right? So it's nature. Nature doesn't know waste. It just can't make waste. Everything nature produces is an output that instantaneously becomes an input, and it goes around in a circle. Everything is green, and it looks like the recycling signal sign behind me, right? So that's nature. But uh, so recycling is really awesome. But when it comes to plastics, what do we know about We're plastic recycling? absolutely being fooled by this. So this is strike one when it comes to our plastic addiction. So it's getting warm here in Arizona, and over the course of a day, if you go to recycle four plastic water bottles, of those four, one actually goes to a recycling center. The other three at best will go to a landfill, and at worst, it'll go to the environment. It's pollution. And it's not that recycling is bad. It's just they're, they're inundated with plastics that we're sending their way constantly. Wow. That's really depressing. So we have four bottles that actually travel to the recycling center, and then only one gets recycled. Now, please, Charlie, tell me that that bottle actually comes back as a virgin, beautiful water bottle? It does not. So You've it's often it's what we call downcycled. So it's made into something of a lesser value. So with plastic, a lot of these water bottles, a lot of times it's made into fibers, which will line something like the, the inside of your jacket here. Don't touch. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so you know what's, what's going on here? We, it looks like we're really getting fooled, right? Yeah. I, I buy it. Strike one. Is there a strike two? two? Oh, yeah. Strike <laughs> two. Marketing, advertisements, Ooh, commercials. Pretty people, beautiful like colors, yeah, yeah, yeah. babies, and pets. Yep. So what we see on TV, we see a commercial where a family comes home, and they see that their dog made a mess. So they go to their cleaning cabinet. They get some stuff to clean it up. The cleaning solution, though, at the end of the day is in a plastic bottle, right? So then they go to recycle it, and the cycle continues. Well, let me, let me walk this back. Yeah, so yeah. there's a spill in the house. Yep. The family goes and cleans it up. Yep. And they use a product that's wrapped in plastic. When the job's done, they throw away the plastic into the recycling bin. But the plastic, since it was never designed to be recycled, has no place to go. And so it becomes a pollutant. It goes into our water and into our food and ends up in our body again, in the body of the people. And so the people are cleaning up the house and they're messing up the globe and their health. You might as well just eat the plastic bottle, honestly. Yeah, don't try that, okay? Bon because appetit. We, we know some people do this kind of stuff. But in essence, that, that's, that's, that's what's happening. Yeah, really what's happening, yeah right? and it goes right into strike three. Oh, I got, I got strike it's three. It's all you, man. It's the money, right? Money talks. And if you look at the price tag, if you look at this tiny little number there, it's really cheap. That's why we buy so many plastics, right? Plastic articles, because they are so cheap. But if you think about it, if you add up the hidden costs, the externalities, then the cost actually balloons. So if we would figure in the environmental you know, pollution that we're creating when we're extracting fossil fuels to make plastics, and then we have emissions, and then we have our single-use straw, which we really don't, don't need, right? And, and plastic plates and flatware and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and so that's a very short-lived material. And then the afterlife of it becomes very, very long, right? We use the material for a few minutes, and then it lingers in the environment, sometimes for a year, 10 years, 100 years, even a millen millennium, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the pl that, that, that is really strange. And, and what happens is that this costs a lot of money, it does a lot of harm, and we are spending more money to clean up our water, to get the microplastics out, right? And then we get exposed, and so we have to, you know, spend more money on healthcare. If you would put all those hidden costs on that pl price tag, the, you know, the, the price would balloon, and nobody in his right mind would buy any plastics anymore, right? So we have to think to ourselves, right? <laughs> That's right. We have to think to That's ourselves right. then, how do we beat our plastic addiction? And I strongly feel that the solution starts where the problem starts. Where do you think that is? Well, do you always ask the hard question? But I think it's in the store. In the store, right? exactly, yeah. So right. it wouldn't be a proper TED Talk without you guys closing your eyes for something, so bear with me. <laughs> Imagine you're in a store that looks like this where you're surrounded by plastic items. Now close your eyes and inhale deeply through your nose. What do you smell? Rolf, what do you smell? Uh, I don't smell too much. I, there's so much food here in the food section. He thinks of the stomach. Go to the toy section. That's where all the plastic don't is. Don't boss me around. Okay, here I am in the toy section. Oh, the air is heavy. I think I figured it out. It's, it's plasticizers. It's the chemicals that give men breasts and women breast cancer. And we and the kids, you know, they change the human development. This is awful. Can I open my eyes? This is a nightmare. Yeah, you can feel I, free I don't want to buy any of that stuff. Yeah, so what we do, we need to change our habits at the store, right? So a lot of times we leave the store with items that look like this. And I get it. It happens to me sometimes, too. 
because I'm on a budget. I'm a grad student, so I have to be able to afford stuff like this. And there are a lot of times there's coupons and such, but what we have to realize is that with a lot of these items, there are alternatives, just like what Rolf has here. That's right. So, you know, we went shopping, and so this is the extreme, right? Everything is single use. And then I went here with my reusable bag, and the first thing I brought was never leave the house without it, your reusable drinking container. And what's in here? That's right. Never like like you know you use your keys when you leave lose the uh, leave the house. So do that. And what's in here? It's not the keys. Silverware. Silverware, right? Bring that too, so you don't need plasticware. Right. So that's fairly simple. Next up, if you want to buy some orange juice for your loved one for a special morning, right? Go for this. Buy it in a cardboard pack, not in the plastic bottle. Damn it. Right. <laughs> Whew. And then this is this is an interesting one here. Remember that, that family that cleaned up the house and messed up the globe in the process, right? They could have bought this. This is a detergent that is, you know, packaged in cardboard. So if this stuff gets out into the environment, it actually degrades and decomposes. That thing, it stays around for 2,000 years, um, you know, reminding us of that. And so, yeah, so it's as simple as that. We, we have all these products, and if we, if we use them, then we're in good shape, finally. I got this here. Charlie, I present to you, since you're such a, a great TED Talker, here you have a banana. Uh, anything remarkable about that? Feels like it's got a skin. It, it does, yeah. That and maybe is a natural protector. Exactly. Yeah. Nature not only is a fantastic recycler, but also a fantastic pet. Sorry. Bring that out. So, very good packaging, right? And it's not only, you know, biodegradable packaging, but also it indicates the ripeness of the fruit. So really awesome stuff, right? Thanks, Let's yeah. look to nature then. Dinner. So now we're done. Is, is, this, is this it? We just dispense the information, then we, everything mm, is hunky-dory? No. No? No. No? So we come to events like this to get inspired, to gain knowledge. I've sat in that seat that you're in right now, and I've looked at this stage, someone discussing a complicated problem. And all I remember is just yearning for a solution, right? Something external, something you can tell me. But in reality, right now, at this moment, Rolf and I were looking at the solution. That's right. So the solution is actually you and me and Charlie. We cannot outsource solving this problem. What needs to happen is that we have to retrain our brain. When we see plastics, we have to see them for what they really are, a failed material that was invented 70 years ago and that we should not use anymore. When we see plastic and when we smell them, the hair should stand up and you should run for your life, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you know what? If we do that, then we are on our way to actually beating the plastic addiction. Oh, right? yeah, and no more plastic hangovers. That's right. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you.